I would like to illustrate our project Trust and Safety that we developed over the two months of lockdown. We never closed the offices. Our offices were open for emergency and elective care. And now that we are facing the reopening, we have to communicate to our patient what we did to recreate an environment for the post-COVID area. What we did to implement the safety and if I should say our commitment to high quality implant dentists as safety never changed. We implemented it and we have to communicate this implementation to our patients. So being a doctor, I start thinking like a doctor. First of all, phase one, diagnosis. We diagnose our spaces to understand the spaces for donning and doffing. We need more space and we reevaluate the workflow of our patient through the office and we diagnose our staff. What, what do I mean for them? Being a surgically oriented practice, I created a post-COVID coordinator. My oldest staff that works with me for more than 20 years, who has the mindset to control infection and safety, trained the other staff from the other branches of dentistry, prostodontics, operative dentists, and endodontology. I need to understand the inventory. How many surgical masks do I have in stock? How many N N95 respirators? How many surgical gloves do I have? How many gowns do I have? Can I check for reusable gowns? And four years ago, we shifted to some reusable gowns that can be put in the autoclave, so in order to reduce the number of disposables that we have in the office, especially now that we are running through very difficult times in order to have a lot of disposable available. And then we had to evaluate or implement or buy new devices to purify the air and to have more changes of air within the hour. And we had to look into medical devices that can sanitize in between our patients. So let's say a technical evaluation of the purity of the air, a technical evaluation of how can we sanitize our offices. And then on top of that, we invested and we understood that it's very important for our dental hygienists that they work by themselves to have some devices, new devices, like a big suction device that can aspirate most of the aerosol. And then the second phase is explaining, communicate to our patient the implementation that we did because without an efficient communication, our patient will not regain trust in coming back to our offices because they might feel that our office is not a safe place. We sent a video, a welcome video, a welcome back video, telling that what we did. And so we told them that it is completely safe even to resume oral hygiene. 
and then we should tell that we can resume right away our implant dentistry and our oral surgery because it's a non aerosol producing procedure so it's more than safe to have electric surgery because our commitment towards maximum safety and high level of dentistry never change. Furthermore, we prepare a series of tutorials to address the practical step that we took to have a safe office, as I said before. And all these tutorials can be shared with you, with your staff, for the benefit of your practice and for the safety of your staff and your patients.